The people who first inspired me are the novelists, the great female novelists, the Brontes, Austin, people like that. And what I've noticed with my own um, fiction is that there's always this kind of slightly gothic tinge to it in the in the style of um, Jane Eyre, you know, burning beds and um, wildness and nature. That comes up quite a lot in my work. In terms of short fiction, my all-time hero is Raymond Carver because he writes such clean prose and it's so understated that they are stories that stay with you. Um, they're certainly stories that um, can bear more than one reading. Um, I find um, Alice Munro and Annie Proulx very interesting for some of the same reasons. They're stories that stay with you. I think there has to be an emotional heart to a short story. Dubliners by James Joyce is another book that I choose as a favourite short story collection, and particularly The Dead and the idea of the epiphany, the moment. I think that's an important part of a short story, um, exploring epiphanies rather than trying to explore, um, you know, exploring the moment of the of the action, the moment of the realisation is something that's very um, important in a short story. I have a very specific way of working. I have to get the full idea out first. So the kind of the drive of an emotion of the story comes out in one go. And then uh, I will tend to go back to the story and add flesh to the bones. Um, I tend to underwrite and sometimes the stories can um, have a full life in my head and come over very simple you know very simplistically on the page um, and through the editing process I try to change that I try to add um, flesh to it and then I will leave the story fallow for at least three weeks and then go back and have a look at the technical aspects of the story in my profession as a teacher you do that so often that sometimes you forget how to <laughs> punctuate and spell because it becomes almost like uh, something you become blind to because you're doing it with so many other peop people's pieces of work. So that's my editing process. Um, the first um, prize I won was a second prize in the Guildford Book Festival in 2001 and it was a first story called Idris and it was about a young girl whose mother is having an affair and who frightens her into um, staying in the house when she goes to have her liaisons by telling her there's a, um, a wolf in the park and she goes and finds her mother with the wolf and another man. Um, so that's what the story's about. And I went down to Guildford and met the other prize winners and met the judges. One of them was Maggie O'Farrell. She was the novel judge. And uh, she talked to me about the process of writing and how she manages writing inside her life. And that was very helpful for me. And it made it feel possible for me to become a writer. I do try to get the um, full story um, clear in my mind before I start to write. So it's not the writing process for me, um, it's the thinking process that happens before I put pen to paper. So in thinking terms, there'll be a kind of searching and a waiting to find out what's going to happen to my characters, but I don't do that through the writing process, I do that through the thinking process. So the moment I put pen to paper or start to type, I will know what, what happens and I will know how it will look, how it will feel. Um, for me, the exciting bit is where you're playing out the drama or the idea in your head. So I don't know how the story's going to end until I've worked that out in my head, which can sometimes take maybe a week or so, I think. So I write in my head first. And again, that's um, because I can do that anywhere and I can fit that around my life and in absent moments. At the beginning of last year I started writing my first novel, um, which I've almost finished in first draft. It's pretty much in shape first draft. But one of the problems I had was I kept wanting to write short stories because for me short stories are um, so contained and so the opportunity is to realise exactly what you wanted in a short story. You can make it beautiful in a way that a novel sort of runs away with you and you can't control them in the same way. So um, I've left my novel for a few months and I'm, I've started writing short stories again this year, um, having not written one for 12 months, which I found very hard. And uh, I've started sending um, stories off again. I've had a few successes in the last couple of weeks. And I'm hoping um, that people like my new stories, because I've noticed a, a subtle change in them.
having not written anything for about a year in the short form. This is a classic example of an image um, forming a story. I had an image of two people lying in bed in a back garden, um, very, very white square of a bed against green with two people in it looking from above as if you were looking down from space. And then from that I got the emotion that there was um, a rift between the two people and that they were very exposed. Um, exposed to the elements but also exposed to each other because they were lying next to each other and once I had the emotion I worked on character and I liked the idea of a woman in her house um, dragging a mattress and dragging sheets and pillows and things outside so she can get outside of the domestic sphere so she's outside of what is um, binding her in, you know, what is kind of keeping her there and a sense of suffocation and then needing to be out in the fresh air um, in order to express herself to her husband. Because I didn't want to lose that image of somebody looking down, I imagined um, a kind of a, almost like an out-of-body experience of somebody kind of shooting downwards, watching people um, and seeing the, the whole thing, the whole story laid out in front of them in its entirety. So um, that's how that story came about. The story Jean, Jean Kruper is um, another classic example of how a single image can spark a story. And I picked up a picture of a man with a drum kit outside a shop and um, that's how that story came about. The idea that why would anybody set up a drum kit outside of a shop? And I like the kind of quirkiness of that. The kind of, this, the, the unexpected and the, and the quirky sometimes spark things off, especially if you see that in visual terms. Because I think from visual terms, um, you, it, it's easy to kind of overlay how you feel in your experience of life, if you take a, an image. Um, and then from that single image of a man with a drum kit outside, I wanted to take the point of view of the person who was seeing him which is the girl in the story, Jean Kruper, and how um, you can be totally overcome with, it, with the image of a man and with the image of somebody who's cool. And really, it's um, so fragile and there's nothing behind it. And it's her kind of view of him. And through the expression of um, music and rhythm, she kind of finds her own beat in life and he helps her do that, even though he's living a lie. Um, at the moment, so there's um, a particular image that I saw in the Sunday papers, which was um, a man mowing his lawn outside a beautifully kept cottage. But at the end of the lawn, it was a sheer drop because it was about coastal erosion. So I've got this idea in my head that from that image, I'm going to write a story. So that's an image that I haven't written yet. But the idea that every day he mows his lawn and uh, almost daily the lawn gets shorter and there's a sheer drop, why would he keep doing that? What, what does that symbolise, the, the kind of the um, gradual dropping away of the coast? What does that symbolise? Who's inside the beautifully kept cottage that kind of inspires him to keep mowing the lawn? Because there's a whole exciting story going on there. In fact, there's 10, 20, 30 stories that could come from that image. And I want to find the one that, uh, that suits me.